my friends, and welcome to the first episode of the Pinch Pumpkin series. In this first episode, I'm going to teach you how to create a pinch pot, which is essentially an evenly pinched bowl shape that you're making out of clay. We're going to use those pinch pots to create your first project, which is a clay pumpkin. So we're making two of those bowl shapes that you will then form into one sphere. And that is what I'll be showing you in today's episode. So let's get started. If you're working with brand new clay from me, you do not need to wedge it. But if you're working with clay that you've used once before, or it was a couple of different pieces that you've joined together, you need to complete a step called wedging to make sure that you don't have any air bubbles in your clay. So what you're doing here is rotating your clay towards yourself and then pushing down onto the table. And you're doing this to try to squeeze the air bubbles out that might've gotten trapped in between the pieces of clay when you joined them together. So we're systematically rotating this clay so that we can press those air bubbles out so that when we fire it, it won't explode. So this step is very important when you're combining multiple pieces. To begin your pinch pop pumpkin project, you're going to start by weighing out one pound of clay. Then you're going to divide that one pound of clay into two separate pieces so that you can make two pinch pots. Wrap up one of your pieces of clay so that it doesn't dry out while we're working with the other one. Then using the piece that you didn't wrap up in your bag, you're going to create a sphere. And it doesn't need to be perfect, just a loosely formed sphere. If you take the time to smooth it too much, you might actually encourage cracks because you're drying out your clay a bit and creating surface tension. So you're just loosely forming a sphere and then we're going to start your pinch pot by poking your thumb into that ball of clay. If you poke your thumb too far down, you're going to not leave enough space to have the correct thickness at the bottom. So you wanna make sure that you don't go too far into your ball of clay. Because of the natural angle of people's thumbs, when you poke your first hole, it's actually creating it at an angle, a slant, rather than going straight down. So to help with that, we're going to rotate your pinch pot around and press your thumb down from all different angles to create essentially a flat space in the base so that you can start pinching there. Before you actually start pinching the base, you need to check and see how thick it is so that you don't go too thin right off the bat. So you're going to use a needle tool and poke it through until you feel it on your finger on the outside of your project. Then you're going to use your other hand to measure where it was up against that space. Then you can use that tool to check and see if it's close to your pinky or if it's thicker than your thumb, which means that you need to make it a bit thinner. Once you've measured to see how thick your starting point is for your base, then you can actually start pinching the base until it's all a perfect consistency of about the width of your pinky. And so you're going to use the full length of your fingers just to pinch, and we're using the thumb and our pointer, middle, and ring finger to just pinch the base until we feel like it's a nice even consistency and about the thickness of your pinky. And again, if you're not sure if the thickness is accurate, you can always use your needle tool to measure. It's incredibly important that your base is pinched to a completely consistent thickness before you move on to pinching the walls. Once you're sure the base is even, that's when you can switch to pinching the walls. But to do that, you have to do what's called making the corner, which means that you are creating an arched rainbow shape of a bowl rather than what you see in the diagram on the right, where that person clearly skipped pinching those corners of their pinch pot. So it's a really common mistake, but you need to be thinking about as you're switching to pinching the walls that you switch directions and don't skip those corners. As you continue to pinch the walls, you wanna make sure that you're using the entire length of your fingers to make sure that your walls are consistent and even all the way through. As you're working on pinching out the walls, you may encounter a few cracks that occur on the rim of your pinch pod. And it's a perfectly easy thing to address. You'll just smooth over those cracks just lightly. It doesn't have to be perfect before you continue moving on. 
I'm using this little piece of clay as an example so you can see what it looks like when I am pinching. And so I wanted to show you the difference in taking the entire length of your hand to pinch. So I'm actually using my knuckle and my fingers to press down like this. So if I'm using the entire length of my hand, then I can use the rest of it to kind of match with this section. So I'm trying to match by feeling the thickness here and then pressing down with the ends of my fingers to try and match it. But if you are just pinching at the end, so say I'm pinching the rim of my pinch pot and I'm going through and trying to just use the ends of my fingers, I can pinch here and then not even realize that I'm pinching much skinnier than the rest of my pinch pot. And so if I'm just pinching, that end or rim of my pinch pot, then I'm not able to tell if it's the same as the rest. And so what I would recommend when you're pinching your rims of your pinch pot is to actually use the knuckle of your thumb as a guide. So I can check and say, okay, now when I pinch, I want it to be the exact same thickness as the rest of my hand. And so that's really helpful to use your entire length of your fingers to compare with the rest rather than just pinching on one end and hoping that it's the right thickness. The last step in creating this pinch pot is just pinching those rims to be the same exact thickness as the rest of your pinch pot. And remember that thickness you're going for is the thickness of your pinky. Remember that if your project is thicker than your thumb in any area, the chances of it exploding in the kiln are very high. So you have to make sure by checking with your needle tool that you don't have any areas that are thicker than your thumb. This diagram shows what your pinch pot should look like cut in half, and that is the left side with it even all the way through. And on the right, it shows all of the common mistakes that students make when they're first learning how to create pinch pots. And so use the, all of the examples on the right as things that you should be avoiding. And the best way to avoid them is to check the thickness with your needle tool. So really take advantage of the fact that you can check the thickness without having to cut your pinch pot in half. Once you've created your first pinch pot, you're going to take out the other half that you saved in your bag and you're going to create another pinch pot. And while you're working, you need to wrap up the pinch pot you just created so it doesn't dry out. Use the same steps as you did for your first pinch pot because we want these to be very similar so that they fit well together. Because once you've got both, made we're going to fit them together so that they make a large sphere now something that students struggle with during this step is that they'll push the edges of their sphere in towards the center of the sphere and then it's indented right in the middle so if that happens before you attach it permanently take them apart and push those edges out so that you can try to make them match because if they're curled in in that center seam then it won't work very well once you try to combine them it'll just push it in even further so once i've got it matched up and i can see that i've like squished all of those edges flat I'm going to create just a little notch with my needle tool and I'm making it on both of my pinch pots so that I can know how to line them up correctly when I'm scoring and slipping them together. This next step is called scoring, slipping, and smoothing. And this is something you have to do every single time you join two pieces of clay together and you want them to stay permanently. So to do this, we're going to take our needle tool and we're going to draw in lines, pretty deep grooves, into both of these surface areas there that we want to combine or connect. So the rims of our pinch pot will be where we're adding the score marks. And once we've gone through and added marks to the complete outer edges of both of our pinch pots we're going to open up that container of slip and we're going to add just a small amount to one of our pinch pots you do not need to do that for both because then you're just going to be adding a whole bunch of slip and you'll probably have too much so apply the slip to one side and then you're going to reapply your groove marks into that slip to make sure that you still have those visible after you've added your slip to the pinch pot. 
Then you're going to find those two notches that you provided for yourself on the outside of your pinch pots. You're going to find those notches and you're going to line them up. Then you're going to slowly press these pinch pots together. And we want to make sure, like I said, that you don't have these edges tilted in towards the center. If it indents too much, there's really no way to fix that. So you need to be careful not to let it indent. We do want to line them up with each other. So if you have any overhanging areas, then it's really a good option to kind of open up that space and then push it down again so that they're lined up really neatly. So this step can really have a big impact on the success of your pumpkin because if you've got a giant indented section, it's going to be quite difficult to help fix that. So once you've gone through and lined these up and made sure that they're as even as you can make them, you're just going to do a quick pass of smoothing over this seam. So you can use any tool that works well for you. That plastic spoon that you have in your disposable kits would work well. One of these wooden blending tools is great. Even the back of your fingernail would work well to blend these seams together. But you do need to use an actual tool, not just the pressure from your finger. So you're going to take the side that is the larger area and you're going to start on that side of the pinch pot and then you're going to blend it over into the side that's a bit lower. So you're taking from the high side, blending to the low side. And you're going to complete this all the way around your pinch pot to make it as smooth as possible. I like to use the side edge of something flat to go along that edge just to make sure I'm getting rid of as many bumps as I created as possible. And I like to do that just by using the side flat edge of a blending tool. You can also try gently rolling your sphere on a surface because that will get rid of a lot of the really large dents and bumps that you've got. It will also create a couple of additional points uh, that are raised but I do think that rolling it is a great way to get rid of those little finger dents that you sometimes get making pinch pots. These next few steps are all about smoothing out your sphere before you get started turning it into a pumpkin and so the first step is to get rid of any of those larger cracks or dents or spots that you have on your sphere and to do that I would recommend trying using that plastic spoon or rolling it out uh, with your hands gently. You can also try smoothing and this next step is probably the best way to smooth. We've already used that wooden tool just to go through and smooth out our seam, but what I'm going to do next is just to take that tool and use it to blend and smooth almost the entire sphere that I've created. And that's just getting rid of any of those larger cracks, any of those dry spots, and it does a better job of smearing the clay into those areas than it does if I were to just use my fingers for this step. For this next part, we are going to start working with water, but I want to just remind you that when you work with a lot of water on a project, if you're trying to smooth that way, it's actually just creating a layer of slip over the top of your project that you are relocating. You're not actually smoothing anything or doing a good job of it, at least if you're using a bunch of water. So what we're doing is actually using a very small amount of water. And I like to call this method the Pocahontas toe touch because if you think of that movie and like where she's just getting into the river and like barely touches the water with her toe as she's getting in, like that is the amount of water that we are using, just barely touching it with like a little tap of your finger, blending it into your hand, and then you can use that tiny bit of moisture or that tackiness that you get on your fingers to help smooth out the rest of your clay. And so you've already taken your wooden blending tool and gone around your entire sphere and blended it that way. Now you're using the pressure from your thumb and that small amount of water that you have on it to press down any of those slight ridges that you get from working with a flat tool on a round surface. So you're just gonna go through and use your fingers to just press down any raised areas or cracks. So by the end of this step, you should have a perfectly smooth and hollow sphere.
thank you so much for taking the time to watch this first episode. I hope that it was helpful and that you learned a lot. And I'm really excited to see how these turn out. So let's continue on to the next episode. Thanks for watching.